this thing is actually quite cheap. It's only about thirty dollars, forty dollars. But uh, my backside itchy, I go and buy about seven to ten tapes. So I had lots of tapes, and the thing was not printing. Let me simulate the problem first. Oops. Okay, obviously, whenever you have any problem, first thing is you ask the expert called Google. And Google told me, you just do a reset of the printer. I did it five times, it worked one time. <laughs> and after that once, I switched it off, the error came back again. So I searched and searched and searched, I couldn't find any more solution. And since I got 10 tapes and I'm going to throw this away, so I say no harm opening up and see what I can do. Worst come worse, I damage it, I throw it away. And after examining the inside of it, it's actually quite simple. It's just one control board, uh, one sensor board, and a print head. That's about it for this thing. And kind of doing reverse engineering, what I kind of expected was maybe it might actually be the light sensing part that is causing the problem. So I took out the board, there's an LED there, and there's a photo, sensor, uh, photo transistor. The LED you can test, the photo transistor is a bit troublesome to test. So, next thing I did, I had a laser printer that I totally dismantled and salvaged parts. And this is one of the parts that is from the laser printer. And lo and behold, there's a diode and there's a photo transistor in there. The trick is how do you take the components out of that one? So I was thinking there was some hidden catch and all that. And all I needed is this magical pin. You just poke into the slot there and you push, the, and lo and behold, it comes out. <laughs> so a very low tech solution, very cheap. So how does, why is that sensor needed? This printer is a very low tech printer with just a normal motor. So it wouldn't know how much it's turning. Uh, if you have any printer, if, the mo if your printer doesn't know how much it's sp spitting out the paper, when you try to print, you find your font size will change constantly. So the printer needs to know how much it's turning. There is a serrated wheel, something like this. So as it rotates, it actually counts how much, how the angle of rotation. And it also takes the timing, and with that, you actually know how much you are turning and how, how fast to do the printing. So with this, this remove, if I turn it on right now, and if I try to do any printing... Oh, low and blue is printing because this is still detecting it. So if this is not detecting, you have the PRR that comes out. So what I did is actually just took out the... Uh, the photo trans okay, it's printing out rubbish now. <laughs> <laughs> so with, without the sensing, basically, it will not allow you to do any printing because it's trying to save the tape. But actually, it's wasting tape because every time you have a PR, it speeds up about uh, 5 mm. So a low-tech solution like this actually uh, can work. So one of the things I typically do at home with parts, I actually don't throw it away. I will actually salvage and throw away the, the bigger items like the laser printer. I threw away all the chassis, everything. I kept the motor, I kept the gears, I kept the electronic parts, I kept the controller, I kept the power supply. And uh, once in a blue moon, some of these parts come useful, but more often than not, it occupies a lot of space in my house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the point. Any questions? Any ideas why it worked that one time? Okay, this one, if you notice, is actually spitting up rubbish. So it's actually still not sensing properly, that's why it's not allowing the head to print. So that one time that it works might be the last breath before it died. Oh. <laughs> okay. Sorry. How do you know it was uh, Okay, the PERR is actually print error. And uh, 
the print head is just a thermal printer head. It's just that uh, heat. Usually the print head, if it's a problem, you actually get the so-called lines on the print. And very often, uh, this kind of printers do not sense your print head error. Because you are just sending an electrical signal or current to your heater element. It doesn't care whether your print head prints or not. But if your drive doesn't work properly, your motor drive doesn't work properly, it doesn't know when to print. Because if you are printing fast or slow, you find that your letters might stretch out or become very condensed. So, so I might miss it just now. So you change the photo diode? Uh, I changed the, photo, the uh, photo, transistor. photo transistor. And you had a spare part for it? I salvaged from a laser printer. From a different, different laser printer? Yeah. Uh, different. different. Anyway, most of these have only two, uh, two wavelengths. They are all infrared, but uh, usually they operate with two different, different types of wavelength. And this is not a critical operation. So even if the wavelength is wrong, it actually that shouldn't matter so much. But the size fit, I mean, that to fit. Okay, the size with this, it will not fit. That's why you have to take out the thing from the inside. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of retrofitting this whole thing inside there, which means I have to actually cut a bigger slot so that I can slot this in. And that was actually much more work, so I decided, okay, let's try to pry it open. Even if I spoil the casing, it doesn't matter because I'm going to take only the component. Okay, thank you.